Welcome back to the channel, today we'll be looking more in depth into the 2 liter V8 diesel engines. I thought it would be useful to compile a short video which highlights some of the advantages and disadvantages of this engine series. My overall comment would be that compared to the older 5 cylinder brother, the reliability hasn't degraded as much as people would probably think. Yes, the engines are now more fussy, but if maintained adequately, I've personally seen many examples of engines with over half a million miles on the clock running completely fine. Most of the issues we covered today relate to the earlier years of production and many were addressed through recalls or service bulletins by 2018. And sure, these engines may lack the iconic 5 cylinder growl, but overall they aren't as bad as sometimes they're made out to be. Personally, I think they're still worth considering. So let's get into the types of diesel engines into the VAA family. The engines came into production in early 2014 and were officially discontinued in 2024. The diesel lineup ranges from a D2 to the D5. Now, unlike the older models, the naming convention here doesn't refer to the cylinder count. All of these engines are 2 liter 4 cylinders, and the main difference here comes down to the forced induction system and the tuning. The power output ranges from 120 horsepower in the D2 all the way up to 235 horsepower in the D5, featuring the power pull system. The D2 and the D3 have single turbochargers while the D4 and D5 come with the more advanced two-stage turbo system. The D5 from 2016 could also be equipped with the so-called power pull system, which is basically a small air compressor and a reservoir that injects compressed air into the exhaust system to help spool up the turbo quickly at the lower RPM range. This cuts down the turbo lag and gives you a better engine response, which is a nice touch in a daily driving. Now let's talk about the fuel system. The V8 diesels use a more advanced dense reinjection system, which includes smart injectors with built-in microprocessors and various sensors. This system is more efficient and precise than the older 5-cylinder one and now with the smaller engine in place is giving about 20-30% to 30 lower fuel consumption for the same produced power. And another big plus here is that unlike the older engines, when you replace an injector you no longer need to code it, but a calibration only will sort it out. However, while the fuel system is generally reliable, there is a downside, limited aftermarket options for replacement. That means when you do need to replace a part, it can get expensive. On the emission side of things, these engines are equipped with EGR and DPF only for the models up to 2018. After that, with the introduction of the Euro 6D, Volvo starts fitting them with an extra outboost system to further reduce emissions. So we're starting off with one of the most common and critical issues for these engines. If you have been looking for a diesel Volvo, you probably would have come across the issue with the EGR system or more specifically a sticking EGR valve or clogged EGR cooler due to carbon buildup. This is known to be caused by the design of the components and the software operating them and is mostly affecting vehicles built up to 2017. The good news is that post-2017 models were equipped with improved EGR and cooler design and there were several recalls to address this issue in earlier models. For eligible vehicles, dealership replaced the old parts with updated ones and performed a software update to improve the EGR operation. If you're dealing with an EGR issues, most garages will recommend replacing the EGR valve or cooler. However, if you're into the DIY, you can save money by removing the EGR and cleaning out the carbon buildup yourself. We have a video of this procedure in our YouTube channel, which you can check out. Another option is an EGR software delete, which improves the engine performance, but keep in mind those kind of interventions are intended for off-road use only. Next up on the list is the oil consumption issue, which affects early models from 2014 to 2016. This problem is common across both diesel and petrol engines of these years and relates to faulty piston ring design, very similar to what they used to have in the older 5 and 6 cylinder petrol engines on some of them of course, which were found to be problematic at the time. For some reason Volvo decided to go back to the low friction piston ring design, likely to meet emission standards, but soon realized it was a costly mistake. Volvo revised the design for mid-2016 and later models. Just for your reference, on some of the affected engines, a no consumption as high as 1 liter every 2000 km has been reported, or maybe even worse. Interestingly, my experience with the issue has been different from the norm. I've seen more than one engines with this year with over 200,000 kilometers that show no signs of oil consumption. A key factor here is perhaps the maintenance, 
regular oil changes using high quality and good driving habits. With shortened service intervals, engine would benefit more from the oil additives and detergents which would help reduce the carbon buildup, potentially preventing this issue from developing in the first place. Plastic intake manifolds. The intake manifold is another known issue. Unlike older models where the rocket cover and manifold were combined, the VA diesel engines have a separate manifold mounted to the cylinder head. This new design is prone to warping or cracking due to high temperatures, likely connected to the EGR issue. Warped or cracked manifold can lead to boost leaks, reduced engine performance and lower fuel efficiency. Volvo issued a recall to address this, but if your car shows these symptoms, it's something to be aware of. The intake manifold also accommodates the swerve flaps. While these haven't been as problematic in Volvos as they have been in other brands, excessive carbon buildup can cause the flaps to stick, reducing engine efficiency. A slur of flap software delete is an option and can improve the engine response and mid-range performance. Valve cover and camshaft seals oil leaks. Another common issue is oil leak from the valve cover and the camshaft seals. Like the intake manifold, the valve cover is a newly designed component on these engines. It's made of plastic and has a PCV valve integrated into it. Several factors contribute to these leaks. First, the valve cover gasket degrades over time due to heat and wear. Another factor is the PCV valve, which can fail, leading to increased crankcase pressure and blow-by gases escaping through the valve cover or camshaft seal. Since the PCV valve is integrated into the valve cover, replacing just the seals might not be enough. You may have to replace the entire valve cover. There is also some evidence that oil leaks might be related to the piston ring design flow and oil consumption issues. Many vehicles with excessive crankcase pressure also experienced oil consumption, which sort of makes sense as in the event of an oil starvation, the piston rings would wear excessively, causing combustion gases to leak out, increasing pressure and leading to oil leaks. Some other less common issues included blocked EMAP pipe. The exhaust manifold pressure sensor connects to the exhaust manifold via thin metal pipe. Over time, the carbon billboard can block this pipe, compromising sensor readings and leading to symptoms like slow engine response, reduced performance or even limp mode. Replacing the EMAP sensor isn't costly but it can be tricky to reach. Exhaust manifold gasket leaks. Some users have reported exhaust gas leaks from the manifold gasket. While a replacement gasket itself is inexpensive, removing the exhaust manifold isn't the easiest job to do. Power pull system on D5s. Early models with power pull systems have had issues with the high pressure air delivery hoses, which can tear. If this happens, the compressor shuts off to prevent damage, but the car will most likely continue to drive without any engine management light, so the only way you know something is wrong is if you feel a drop in the power. Several hose design revisions have been made. Cracked EGR to exhaust manifold pipe. Some vehicles have experienced cracks in the pipe connecting the exhaust manifold to the EGR. Symptoms include reduced engine power and smell of exhaust gases in the cabin. At this point you might be considering changing the car brand, but don't worry, it really isn't that bad. German car manufacturer fanboys probably won't be happy to hear that, but the reality is that compared to other car brands from similar class, the VA engines with moderate servicing could easily hit half a million miles. And yes, you won't have to do expensive repairs as replacing the timing chain when engine reaches 150,000 kilometers, which by the way costs half the retail price of the car. Anyways, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments, like and subscribe and see you next time.